it's, it's not okay to copy. And at the same time, it's very important we respect each other, uh, our uh, personal space, okay? And one more thing, please do not eat during class, okay? It's a little bit distracting. Uh, sometimes if there is uh, a food smell, you know, I, I, I can know, I know what you're eating. I might see, you know, somebody is like that with a sandwich, and that, that's kind of distracting, and uh, that <laughs> might, might, might throw me off a little bit during the lecture. So, so <coughs> if you're very hungry, please eat, out, eat outside and come back to the classroom. All right? Any questions about the syllabus? Um, remember that everything is here on, in Canvas. Uh, you can check it. And this is going to be the most updated version that, that you're going to see. <coughs> no clap? No, no questions? Everything OK? Yes? You, you sent me an email, right? I didn't I didn't send an email. No, because some, somebody sent me an email about it. I was, I was going to. I so, so those are the dates of the, <coughs> of the exams. You should try to make it. If uh, There should be a major reason why you can't make it, right? Uh, and, you, and please let me know in advance uh, about that. About the time, that the time is still something um, I'm going to try to to change if, if possible. And um, with some extraordinary uh, situations, also I may I'm, I might make some uh, extra accommodations. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, will the exams last for two hours? The exams. If I'm thinking about that, uh, usually my exams are one hour and a half. But I'm trying to reduce them to one hour, fifteen minutes, one hour. Any other question? <coughs> no? Uh, okay. So let's see. We talked about, uh, about the syllabus. We talked about organization. Let me put this over here. You guys got a good break? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Anyone has something funny to share? Some exotic place that you went to? No. What? Stayed in San Antonio. Any extreme sports? Skiing? Did, did someone go skiing? Yeah. Nice. Where did you go? Uh, in, fire in, in Mexico. New Mexico. New Mexico. Okay. In the new. Is that close to Colorado? Yeah. Okay. I went to Taos last uh, winter. It was pretty good. Did you ski or snow? I ski. All right, guys. Uh, let's let's change uh, gears here. Uh, we're gonna get started talking about an introduction uh, to geomechanics. Again, uh, this is going to be. If you go over here, uh, we're gonna talk about uh, this chapter today. Uh, you, you can read all of these later on, uh, but I'm just gonna give it a brief overview. Yes, you have a question. Um, the homework, are we doing that in class on Friday or do on Friday? We're going to get started with it Friday. on Friday. And if you finish it that day, uh, that's uh, good for you. You don't have anything else to do. The homework is going to be assigned online, and it's going to be <coughs> turned on online, too, as a PDF. So I'm also saving you some extra bucks you're not going to have to print out anything, OK? All the submissions are going to be uh, with the PDF online. And in that online submission, you're going to see the, the, the date, uh, which is a deadline for submission. As long as you submit a PDF before the, the deadline, 
which is usually 11.59 p.m., uh, you're fine, okay? Yes? Uh, if they're submitted online, how do we get grades back? Do we see what we missed? Yes, we put uh, notes on it, like sticky notes or some additional uh, um, not handwriting, <coughs> but you know, we just add notes to the, to the PDF where you see what you did wrong. And uh, that's the way we do communicate. All right, guys, uh, let's get started with uh, an introduction to geomechanics. Um, for that, I'm going to use the, the dog camera. <coughs> This projector is not great, so if you cannot see very well what I'm writing, please let me know, okay? I may have to change uh, my pencil and my pen, but, uh, but uh, let me know. I think it might be okay, but if it's not, just let me know. So today, we're gonna talk about an introduction to geomechanics. And today, uh, what is today? 23. And uh, uh, first of all, guys, what, what do you know about geomechanics? And anyone can give me an example about applications of geomechanics? I, for example, I say hydraulic fracture, right? Uh, what else uh, comes to your mind? <coughs> Probably some of you already did internships related to, to geomechanics. What? What did you say? Drill bits the oh. drill bits, yes, drilling is a part of geomechanics. Seismic, uh, <laughs> uh, seismic is a part of geomechanics too. Uh, everything that involves rock deformation and rock failure uh, is related to, to geomechanics. And uh, as we're going to see in a bit, uh, geomechanics is involved in all phases of petroleum engineering. Going from exploration, passing uh, through uh, drilling, then going into production, and later also into waste disposal. So uh, let me start doing here some, some drawings. I like to draw. We're going to go out to the sea uh, where <coughs> we're going to have a vessel over here. <coughs> yes? Should, you know, can you turn off autofocus because it starts focusing on your hand and then the paper? Let's try that. Um, yeah. Works? <laughs> okay, so uh, we're gonna go out, out to the sea, and at some point we're gonna get onshore. First of all, how do we find oil? This is the <coughs> exploration part. <coughs> how do you look for oil? How do you know that the oil might be? Laying in some place. Something funny going on there. Uh, can, can you, you guys know? So somebody mentioned uh, seismic, right? So seismic can be uh, very useful for uh, mapping structures in the subsurface. But seismic is relatively recent, right? How did people do 100 years ago in order to find out? Geologic context. Geological what? Context. Context, right? So, so you try to look on surface of what is on surface to try to see more or less what might be in the subsurface. Uh, the part of geology that studies the deformation of rocks uh, is called uh, structural geology. So in structural geology, 
by looking at uh, sur uh, features in the surface, like for example, uh, let me draw here. Uh, are you guys familiar with salt diaphragms? Anyone? Intrusions. Yeah, it's a salt dome, right? It's, it's salt that was deposited a long time ago, but because its weight is lower than the weight of the rock, it goes up like a fluid uh, during a long time. And as it goes through, uh, through those layers that were deposited later on, it pierces through those layers. And if you have a hydrocarbon source, a source rock, let's say somewhere over, over here, that releases hydrocarbons, those may migrate up. And if you have a shale, <coughs> you may have a hydrocarbon accumulation. Next to uh, some of these features, also if you have uh, the action of uh, tectonic stresses, uh, you can also have uh, folding and faulting. So folding is when uh, sedimentary layers, they bend without breaking in a, a clear discontinuity. And faulting is a case where you have a clear discontinuity <coughs> that breaks those layers. And in this case, this is a shale. And for example, if we had that shale now somewhere over here, and let's say this is the sandstone. <coughs> oil over there. So structural geology uh, is, is the first thing that is going to come into the picture when we talk about uh, geomechanics. Uh, geomechanics recently, with the advance of uh, uh, high computing power, has been able to model better and better geological structures that are actually quite difficult to, to model. And it's it just recently that we have become able to, to do uh, such uh, computations. So here at the top, I'm going to put structural geology. You need <coughs> structural geology in order to know what you have in the subsurface, what you are going to expect on in the subsurface. And also, you need to know uh, structural geology in order to know the initial conditions of a process. So if you were, for example, uh, to come over here and put a wellbore, you want to know what are the initial conditions of that place. And in order to know that, uh, the better you know those initial conditions, the best or the better off are you going to be in the future to do any change. How do you know what your changes are going to produce if you don't know what the initial conditions are. That's why uh, structural geology <coughs> is very important. And structural geology is going to tell us about faults, about faults, like anticlines, and, and some other things that we're going to see uh, later on. What else you, you do in exploration? Uh, you do, as we said, uh, for example, seismic survey. What is a seismic survey? Can somebody tell me what we do in a seismic survey? So I'll tell you how we link that uh, to geomechanics. You raise your hand? No? You know what a seismic survey does? Uh, doesn't it tell you about the But how? What, what is the, the underlying physics behind that? You, you, you know? <coughs> the densities that are under the surface with the seismic survey. So they usually do like maybe set off a small explosion and then see what happens. And what what is that ex small explosion? What does it do? It it wave. What what kind of wave? <coughs> an acoustic wave, right? And what is an acoustic wave? 
it's, it's a pressure wave. As we're going to see later on, for example, here if you have your, your seismic array and say uh, here you send, uh, you make an explosion, you send a wave, and here you have your receivers. These are going to go into the subsurface and are going to hit the rocks. Changes in the properties of the rocks <coughs> are going to make some of these waves to bounce back, and that's how you're going to register those uh, with the geophones. But basically, these waves are compressive waves. These are the result of applying to the rock if the, the wave is going into this direction, it's going to apply to the rock the deformation in this direction, like that. And that depends on the stiffness of the rock. How stiff uh, the rock is, the stiffer the rock, the higher the velocity of the wave uh, is going to be. So um, let's say that using seismic, you were able to map this anticline, and also you were able uh, to locate a good candidate for a hydrocarbon accumulation. All the geophysics is telling you there is oil over there. What do you do after? What? I can't hear you. How much oil um, Well, let's see that. Let's say that the geophysical instruments and surveys tell you there is a lot of oil. What do you do after? Find how to get there. <coughs> okay, and, and then? You drill a well, well, right? I mean, if you get the lease, you get everything uh, that you need to do, uh, you will go into the drilling. Drilling and something else I'm going to write here later.